prebiotic evolution in the origin of life, chemical and biological aspects. You are watching my channel, Dr. Biochem Lecture. My name is Dr. Alam Zeb. I am a professor at the Department of Biochemistry, University of Malacan. I did PhD from the Institute of Biochemistry, Graz University of Technology. First, we know we need to know evolution in its history. Uh, evolution can be defined any development or change adapting to the environment. Molecular evolution rep represent changes of chemical substances. It through it thus signifies that changes occur fundamentally in the molecules. The term chemical evolution is often used for abiotic or prebiotic formation of organic molecule on Earth. Cosmology is the branch of astronomy concerned with the study of the origin and evolution of the universe from the Big Bang to the today and on the future. Uh, William Harvey uh, thesis proposed that all life originate from an egg. Uh, this was actually confined to higher life that is vertebrate and does not say anything uh, about the spontaneous generation of lower life. Similarly, Francisco Reddy disapproved the spontaneous generation of the worm, maggots. Uh, he was an Francisco Reddy was an Italian uh, physician and biologist and also we call him the founder of experimental biology. Uh, you can see in this picture his experiments were based upon the flask unsealed, flask seal and flask covered. So the flask unsealed contain degenerate maggots and the flask uh, seal and uh, uh, do not contain any maggots while uh, there were um, the one with the flask covered with the gas uh, contain uh, do, uh, do not contain uh, the maggots. These were the experiments on the generation of insects. Uh, similarly, Char Charles Robert Darwin was an English biologist. Uh, here is his picture. Uh, he suggests that all forms of life that ever existed on earth evolved from a common ancestor. He called them natural selection. For example, you can see the change in the um, uh, the shape of the uh, the birds, the class of the birds, and also you can see how the human evolved from uh, from animals to the modern form of the human being. So in this case, you can see that the uh, humans are evolved from an animal which were supposed to be the ancestor of the animals. However, this theory is not 100% true on the basis of several experiments and uh, postulation. Uh, later on in the 1865, Richter stated that germs of lives are present everywhere in the eternal and infinite cosmos uh, he also stated that all life since eternity originate from a cell. So you can see in this picture, uh, every type of life, so the animals, the plants, and all these are originated from a single uh, cell. So this was another uh, theory. They call it panspermia. That means that all cells originated from one cell. In the 18th century, an Italian priest, Lazzaro Spallanzani, showed that fertilization of the egg by sperm was necessary for the reproduction of uh, mammals. 
similarly, Louis Pasteur showed that even the most minute creature came from the germs that floated downward in the air. Pasteur's experiment results were definitive. Life does not spontaneously appear on Earth. And uh, then Savante Arrhenius suggested that life on Earth arose from the panspermia microscopic spores that wept through space from the planet to planet or solar system to solar system by radiation pressure. But this is a hum highly unlikely. Later on, Alexander Oparin recognized that non biological production of organic molecule in the present since of oxygen rich atmosphere of earth is unlikely he suggested that under reduced environment the epigenetic production of organic molecule has been more likely to occur in hot dilute soap now we need to know about the modern theories of the origin of life the first one is chemical evolution or we call it chemogeny uh, the first um, theory in this case is the atomic phase. Uh, we know that the early uh, Earth had innumerable atoms of all those elements that is hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, etc., which are essential for the formation of uh, protoplasm. Atoms were segregated in the the three concentrated masses according to their weight, for example, heavy, medium, and lightweight elements. The second theory of the chemogeny is based on the formation of inorganic molecules, that how inorganic molecules are formed from the simple elements. So in this case, three atoms combine to form inorganic molecules such as hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, and water vapor, methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide, hydrogen atoms were most numerous and most reactive in the primitive atmosphere. First, hydrogen atoms combined with all oxygen atoms to form water and leaving no P uh, oxygen. Hydrogen atoms combined to, with the hydrogen to form uh, ammonia. Then, formation of simple organic molecules occurs. So, this is the third theory in chemogeny. Uh, the early inorganic uh, molecules interacted and produced simple organic molecules such as simple sugars, that is ribose, deoxyribose, glucose, etc., nitrogenous bases, that is purine, pyrimidine, amino acids, glycerol, fatty acid, etc. Thus, ancient ocean water contained large amount of dissolved ammonia, methane, Hydrogen cyanide, nitride, carbide, various gases and elements. You can see in this uh, reaction, uh, carbon dioxide combined with uh, ammonia and water forming sugar, glycerol, fatty acid. Similarly, methane, uh, hydrogen cyanide and water combined to form purine and pyrimidine, and methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide and water form amino acid. These were the, uh, supposed to be the preliminary reactions. Now, uh, experimental evidence for a biogenetic. Genic a molecular evolution of life. The experiment of Stanley Miller and Harold Urey showed that UV radiation or electrical discharge or heat generate organic molecules. Uh, large numbers of simple organic compounds, including some amino acids such as alanine, glycine, and aspartic acid, were produced. You can see in this picture, this was the diagrams of the uh, Yuri experiments. Now, how uh, complex uh, organic compounds are formed? Uh, in this theory, uh, a variety of the amino acids, fatty acid, hydrocarbons, purine, py and pyrimidine bases, simple sugars, and other organic compounds accumulated in the ancient seas. Um, and for and then S. W. Fox demonstrated that if a nearly dry mixture of the amino acid is heated, uh, polypeptide molecules are synthesized. I mean, amino acids join to form peptide and proteins. Simple sugar combined to form polysaccharides, and you can see in, in this case, amino acid combined to form protein. Sugar and sugar combined uh, 
to pump, uh, carbohydrate, and so on. Now, which one of the biomolecules come first? The RNA first hypothesis says uh, was proposed by Orgel, Crick, and Woods independently that RNA word is the first stage in the evolution of life in which RNA catalyzed all molecules necessary for survival and replication. Then Thomas Sick and Sidney Altman discovered that RNA can be both a substrate and an enzyme. If the first cell used RNA as their hereditary molecule, DNA evolved from an RNA template. The protein first hypothesis. In this case, um, protein uh, catalytic system must have developed before a nucleic acid replicative system. Uh, for example, Sydney Fox has shown that an amino acid polymerized abiotically when exposed to dry heat to form proteinide. And later on, Graham K uh, Ken Smith proposed that both protein and RNA originated at the same time. So, uh, all the three theories, hypotheses are uh, available. Now, the second type of evolution is biological evolution or biogeny. For this case, the origin of life, at least three conditions should be uh, fulfilled. There must have been a supply of replicator that is self-producing molecules and copying of these replicator must have been subject to error through mutation. The system of replicator must have required a continuous supply of free energy and uh, partial isolation from the general environment. So the question arises how oh, the first what uh, what do we know about the first cell? Uh, the first cell were uh, operating in the 1920 proposed. The first cell uh, is a co uh, which are non living structure, and that led to the formation of the first living cells from which the more complex cells have today evolved. Oparin speculated that a protocell consist, consisted of carbohydrate, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acid. You can see that these are the co servers in the water surrounding. And the second type of cells were microspheres and the and the second hypothesis was that the early protocell could have been a microsphere. A microsphere is a non-living collection of the organic molecules with a double-layered uh, outer boundary. And if, uh, Fox demonstrated the ability to build microsphere from the proteinides. Proteinides are formed by the dehydration synthesis of amino acids. So you can see here the, um, the boards and the uh, proteinides. How the prokaryotes are originated? Prokaryotes were originated from protocells about 3.5 billion years ago in the sea. Uh, prokaryotes do not have nuclear membrane, cytoskeleton, or complex organelles. Uh, they divided by a primary fusion. They can be obtained. They can obtain energy from fermentation or become autotroph, chemotroph, or photoautotroph to become self-sufficient for uh, their um, for their metabolism. Now, how eukaryotes are originated? The eukaryotes de developed from primitive prokaryote cells about 1.5 billion ago, years ago. Some in aerobic predator host cell. Um, uh, engulf primitive abiotic bacteria and did not digest them. Uh, these bacteria established themselves inside the host cell as a symbiont. Such predator host cell become the first eukaryotic cell. The predator uh, host cell that engulfed a aerobic a bacteria evolved into animal cell. Those captured the anaerobic uh, fungi, the other one become animals and the other become plant cells.